Hi, everybody. I'm Queerty Marketing Director Adam Salandra, and I am here with the Latrice Royale. Latrice, thank you so much for talking to us today. And congratulations on being a Queerty Pride 50 honoree. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. You are so welcome. And happy Pride, by the way. Well, happy Pride to you. I do want to talk about We Are Here. It is a blessing to us anytime we have you on our TVs, but even more so for a show like We Are Here. I know that you get called in for reinforcement when the Queens were in Oklahoma. Why do you think they realized at that point in the season, we need Latrice's voice, we need her unique perspective? Very exactly those words. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've lived a life uh, and I have a lot of experiences through, uh, you know, making some choices. I've been a fan of the show from inception, like from the beginning. And then um, I've always felt like I would be a great asset to the show because it is definitely an extension of my ministry and what I do uh, throughout my touring of the world. And so when the opportunity came, it really felt like the timing was right. So I feel like everything happens in its time. And, it's, and, and season four seems to be... Uh, a trend for great things for me. I was going to say the same. It was was four a lucky number for you before the before? Yeah, or you, I, it is now. Yeah, it worked out. It seems <laughs> to work out. <laughs> How different was the experience filming Drag Race to filming something like We're Here? Which one was harder? Well, you know, each presents its own challenges. Except the difference with this is that there are no shenanigans as far as post production goes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is actually a lens or a mirror, if you will, of a reflection of what's going on in our America. And so um, the difference is that you're getting the raw real deal. Um, there's no manufactured drama. Is that something you've experienced in the past? I, I mean, I might have experienced something like that. My season four of all stars, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting back to Pride, since you're one of our Pride 50 honorees, I just wanted to know if you remember your first Pride experience. What, what was that like for you? I was blown away. I was 20 years old and I had moved to Fort Lauderdale. I didn't even know what Pride meant. I had really just come out, if you will. And people from all over the three different counties, from Dade, from Palm Beach, Broward, all came to meet in this park. And there were so many gay people. And I was just like, oh my God, I didn't know this many gay people existed and was. I was blown away. But I didn't even know what I was celebrating. And now that I know the history of Pride and they stand for, now I encourage everybody to have Pride every day, not just in June. Pride is a lifestyle, and we have wow to make sure that people understand who's not in the gender. And it's not going away. And it's not going away. I love it. Well, last question I have is what we're asking all our Pride 50 honorees. What is your queer superpower? Drag is my queer superpower. Like, you didn't know that drag has healing power. Like, we have powers beyond our own comprehension. When I put on my my super costume. It's just transformative for, for not only me, but for people who experience what I bring to the art. So, I love it. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. I've loved you for since so many season fours ago. Stop it! <laughs> Congrats again on being a Queerty Pride 50 honoree, and I hope you have an amazing Pride season. You too. Thank you.